many people even today, young people, old men, uh, husbands, wives, children, everyone is trying to work on their behaviors, even pastors. But I tell you like this today, the problem of man is not their behaviors. The problem of man is his nature. Hallelujah. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time of the day when you're watching this. I'm excited. My name is Ben Fetcher and this is Beholding Christ Show. And I'm so happy this day that the Lord has given us this day so that we may rejoice and be glad in it. What he's doing in our lives is just marvelous. We are receiving testimonies every day about the goodness of God, about the love of God, about the glory of God, and the manifestation of the Spirit of God in our day-to-day -day lives. Hallelujah. So uh, we started sharing on uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. We are talking about the man in Christ. Hallelujah. And we say that the man in Christ has become a new creature. I don't want to go back to that. Now I want us to again still in 2 Corinthians 5 17. I want to, to divide that part of the scripture or part of the, the verse into three uh, sections. The first one is what we shared actually, the new creation. So the other one is all the old things let me take it up again. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. The second thing, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So the first thing we shared last time is oh, that he is a new creature. And we shared briefly about that. Then today, I want us to look at all things are passed away away hallelujah all things are passed away so when the bible talks about all things which are passed away what is the bible talking about we've had people say like i was a drunkard uh, i was a thief i was an adulterer i was uh, i was addicted to drugs or i was addicted to uh, to so many things and that is who i was but now i am in a church goer I am a church member, I am born again. So when the Bible talks about the old things that have passed away, what is he talking about? Is he talking about your drunkenness? Is he talking about your, uh, your, your past mistakes or your past addictions? Or what is the Bible talking about? Let me say this at this point, like the behaviors of men has not been the main issue with God. God is not necessarily bothered by the behaviors of men. I know that one is, is like uh, shocking to so many of you who are watching this program. God is not shocked about the behaviors of men. And it, the behaviors of men don't bother God. What bothers God is not their behaviors, but their nature. That is why Christ came not to change the behaviors of men, but to change their nature. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The moment you get that revelation, you'll be a liberated man. Because many people even today, young people, old men, uh, husbands, wives, children, everyone is trying to work on their behaviors. Even pastors are trying to help believers and church members to work or act on their behaviors. But I tell you like this today, the problem of man is not their behaviors. The problem of man is his nature. Hallelujah. And Christ did not come to deal with your behavior because the gospel is not about modifying man's behavior. The gospel is about transforming man from the inside. You know, something about behaviors, uh, when we, want, we try to modify behaviors, we look at the outside of a man, what he does, what are his habits, what are his ways of talking, how he speaks, how he, uh, he dresses or she dresses for that case, how she does or he does his things. We look on the outside. But the problem of man is not the outside, but the inside. And I would like to take you back to the days of the old when the law was given. The law was not given to change the man from inside. 
the law was given to try to modify man from outside. That is why the law only talks about do's and don'ts. Do's and don'ts. It says, do not do this, do not do this, do not do this. But when Christ came, he came to change men from inside by uh, by working on who they are. That is why when now we believe in the gospel, we may not be changed automatically on our outside behaviors, but instantly we receive the gospel. We are changed in our inside man. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 51, we look back the story of uh, a guy called David. David used to sin. He had bad behaviors, like many of you. Yes, like many of you. He had bad behaviors. He had bad things. He, he was a murderer. He was not a good guy anyway. But there came a time when he realized that, man, I cannot help myself. I've tried to change my behaviors. I can't do it by myself. And this is the prayer he prayed in Psalms 51. I think uh, it's from verse, verse 10, Psalms 51 from verse 10. He says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Take not away your spirit from me. Those three statements. He says, create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me, and do not take away your spirit from me. These three things are not trying to modify his behaviors. They are addressing the core of the matter, which is the heart and which is the nature or his identity. So he prayed, create in me a clean heart, O God. So David knew that the problem with my behaviors is not because, uh, it's not as a result of what I do. The problem with what I do is who I am the nature I have. So that is why he prayed that God make me a new creature. And now in Christ, that has been answered. Everyone, that, everyone now that believes in Christ, you have been made a new creature. Now he says, the old things have passed away. Is he talking about the old behaviors? Not really. He's not talking about your old behaviors. He's not talking about your drinking behaviors. He's not talking about your addiction. He's not talking about your actions. He is talking about your nature. The old things are passed away. Hallelujah. The old you is passed away. Let us see, uh, let, let us see how he described us how or who we were in the old and how he describes the people we were in the old. And I would like us to go to Ephesians chapter 2 where we were last time. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. How he describes us in the past. He says, you has he quickened who are dead in trespasses. So one of the things that have passed away is that we were dead in sins and trespasses. We were separated from God because of sins and trespasses. And this sin is not our actions, but this sin is our nature. Praise be to God. This is our sinful nature, which we had inherited from the man called Adam. So this is who we were before. These are some of the old things that have passed away. We were dead in sins and trespasses. Then he says, in time past, you walked according to the course of this world. The things that were governing us before we came into Christ is uh, what he calls the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air. In other words, we were under the dominion of the devil. We were under the dominion of sin. We were under the dominion of the law. We were under the dominion of this world, the prince of the power of the air. Then he calls him the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. This is another thing that has passed away. We were uh, walking according to the prince of the power of the air and we were the children of disobedience. Wow. This is not who you are. This is who you were. Today you are not a child of disobedience. You are a child of disobedience. But the old things have passed away. Behold, all these all things have become new. Then he says, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the last of our flesh. We were 
walking in the lust of our flesh and we were fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. Wow, this is who we were. This is the old things that have passed away. That we were by nature children of wrath. We were children of wrath. We were separated from God. We deserve the anger of God. We deserve punishment. This is who we were. And, were, and, uh, and we were fulfilling the desires of the flesh in and of the mind. In other words, we were walking not led by the spirit. We were independent. We were separated from God. No, when Adam and Eve ate from the garden of, uh, uh, from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they chose independence from God. In other words, we don't need you. We can make choices by ourselves. And that is how we were. We were independent. We wanted to live independently outside God. Wow. But now that is not who we are. Those are the things that have passed away. Let us go for a short break and uh, remain there. This is Beholding Christ program. My name is Ben Fetcher. See you shortly after this break. Welcome back, Beholding Christ show, and this is wonderful. We are talking about the man in Christ, and we say that he is a new creature. Now we are saying that the old things have passed away, and now we are describing and understanding what the Bible means when it talks about the old things that have passed away. We say it is not talking about your drunk, your drunkenness. He's not talking about your addictions. He's talking about something serious, 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 something that is beyond your feelings, something that is beyond your own actions, something that goes deep down into the root of man. That is his nature. And we say that we were dead in sins and trespasses. We were ruled by the fallen prince. We were children of disobedience. We walked according to the lust of the flesh. We were children of wrath. Today, you are not a child of wrath. You are not a subject to wrath. You are not a candidate of wrath. Hallelujah. I know you've heard so many messages sometimes telling you about how God is hungry with you and you are expecting the wrath of God. You are expecting to be judged and condemned by God. But that is who we were. That, those are some of the things that have passed away. The other thing now I want, I want us to turn to uh, Colossians chapter 1 verse 21. Colossians 1. Hallelujah. Ah, God is good. Colossians 1 from verse 21. Now again, and I, used to, uh, I say this many times that uh, anytime you're reading the Bible, it's good to understand the tenses, the tenses of which uh, the scriptures is talking about. Could be, it could be past tense, could be present tense, or it could be future tense. But now what we are seeing here when we talk about the old things that have passed away, it's past tense. The things that have passed. Now, verse 21 of Colossians 1 says, And you that were sometime alienated. So this is another thing that has passed away, that we were alienated. We were alienated. Alienated. Let me uh, read for you with the message Bible. It says, You yourselves are a case study of what he does. At one time, you all had your backs turned to God. You were alienated. You had your backs turned to God. <laughs> that is funny. You were alienated. You were separated from God. You were far from God. You had no relationship with God. You had no mercy. You had not obtained mercy. You were far from the love of God. You were far from, uh, uh, from the kingdom of God. You were alienated. You were separated from God. The NLT says, this includes you who are once so far away from God. So these are some of the things that have passed away. We were so far away from God. Mm -hmm. Alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Yet now he has reconciled you. So that is who we were. We were separated from God. We were far from God. Yet now he has reconciled us. 
in the body of his flesh through death to present us holy. Now these are the things, the new things that we'll be talking about, that the new things that have come. Praise be to God. But before I go to the new things, again, I want you to show I want to show you something else that we were that has passed away in First Peter. First uh, Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. Behold, all things have passed away. Old things, old things have passed away. First Peter chapter 2. We go to verse 10. It says. Mm -hmm. which in time past, again, this is in past tense, which in time past, you are not a people. You are not a people. Wow, this is serious. According to God, we were not a people. We were separated from God. Then he says, but now are a people of God. We had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. He says, we were not a people. We were, sep you know, in God's eyes, I don't know, how to describe this, but because we were separated from him, we were like dead men. We were carcasses. According to God's eyes, we were, we were dead in his realm. Let me take you back a little bit to the book, uh, to the book of Genesis, the Garden of Aden. When God came after the fall of man, when God came into the garden, he asked Adam and Eve, where are you? I usually ask this question. Does it mean that God, the almighty God, the omniscient, all-knowing God, the omnipotent, all-powerful God, the omnipresent, the all-presence, all present everywhere God, could not locate where Adam and Eve were? Does it mean he could not see them and they were hiding behind the bush? Does it mean they could not, he could not see them? Yes, he could not see them, but not physically. God is spirit, <laughs> and he sees men in the spirit. So when they fell short, they were separated from God, and they were separated from the spirit of God. So when God came in the cool of the day, like he used to do in previous times, when he came, he could not see them where they used to fellowship. So it's not talking about a geographical place, but the spiritual place, the place of the life of God. So when God looked for them, he could not see them because they had fallen. You know, Romans, uh, the book of Romans, Paul says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So this, is be this began with Adam. When they sinned, they fell short of the glory of God. And when God came into the garden in his realm, the usual realm of glory, he tried to locate them, but he could not see them because they had fallen short. And now that is what we inherited from Adam. So when God looks at men outside Christ, he is still asking them, where are they? Where are you? Are you among them that are being asked, where are you? Can God see you? Can he locate you spiritually? Because the moment you get into Christ, that is where God locates you. Because he uses his sunglasses. I don't mean S-U-N. I mean S-O-N glasses. Other people think that he uses sin glasses. God does not look at us based on our sins. That is how many people have ended up judging themselves, condemning themselves that I'm not so good, I've, I am a failure, I am not perfect, I am not holy, I don't deserve God's love, I don't deserve to be loved by God, I don't deserve God's blessings because you think God uses sin glasses to look at you. No, God does not look at you using sin glasses. He uses sun glasses and not S-U-N but S-O-N. So he sees us in his son. So if you are outside his son, he sees you as dead because you are separated from him. But now if you are in Christ, he sees you in his son and he sees you in the perfection of his son. So we are talking about who we were. He says we were not a people. So we were not in the realm of God. We had not obtained mercy but now we have obtained mercy Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 another thing we were that has passed away he says old things have passed away Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 says for you are sometimes darkness you are sometimes in darkness no you are not in darkness he says you are sometimes darkness ha. this is serious because most of us thought we were in darkness but God's description, according to Apostle Paul, he says, you are sometimes darkness. 
The thing that is called darkness, that was us outside Christ. But now these are the old things that have passed away. You are not darkness. He says, you are sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Hallelujah. We were darkness, but not. But now we are not darkness. We were also in darkness. We were darkness that was in darkness. So how dark was that darkness? But now we, were, we are in Christ because those old things have passed away. Coloss uh, Galatians. Okay, before we go to Galatians, Ephesians 2.11. We are talking about the old things that have passed away. Ephesians 2.11. He talks about, listen, he says, Wherefore, remember that you being in time past Gentiles. Now, now he comes to us who are not Jews. He says, we were Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Then he says that at that time you were without Christ. We were without Christ. Hallelujah. We were aliens. Manze, <laughs> this is serious now. He's calling us aliens. Tulikuwa ma aliens. We were aliens. We were far from God. From the we, aliens and separated and we were, we had not, we, ha, we had no God and we were separated from the commonwealth of Israel. That is what he says. And strangers from the covenants of the promise. We had no covenant with God. We had no promise with God. We were not counted about um, among the people that had a promise. And we had no hope. And we were without God in this world. Wow, this is serious, serious. Verse 19 says, of the same Ephesians 2, 19, it says, Therefore you are no more strangers. So it means we were strangers and foreigners, but now we are fellow citizens with the saints and of the house of God. And before I conclude this, Galatians chapter 3, we were talking about who we were and the old things that have passed away. In Galatians chapter 3, uh, verse 10, he says, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. So before Christ, before we believed in Christ, we were under the law, and therefore we were under a curse. But now he says, all those things that I have mentioned there, they have passed away. You are not, uh, you are not a child of wrath. You are not dead in sins and trespasses. You are not ruled by the fallen prince. You are not a child of disobedience. You are not alienated an enemy of God. You are are a people now and now you have obtained mercy and you belong to the promise hallelujah you are not an alien and you are not hopeless and you are not without God now you belong to God hallelujah now he says all things have passed away now those are the old things that have passed away then all things that were a result of your old nature they have passed away that is not who you are you're not a sinner you're not a slave to sin you are now a new creature that is in Christ. So in our next episode, we look at the man in Christ and the new things that have come and all these new things are of God. Thank you for watching and for following. This is Beholding Christ Show. My name is Ben Fetch and I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you for my, uh, for my viewers today. I call them blessed and I declare the blessing and the definition that they have in Christ is what will stand and remain despite the storms and the circumstances of this life. I thank you, Lord, for you, are, uh, you have blessed us so greatly. In Jesus' name we pray. Until our next episode, this has been Ben Fetcher, Beholding Christ, and you are blessed. God loves you so much. Amen.